Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Yasmina McCarty, who is the head of uh, mobile for development for the GSMA. Yasmina, welcome to the studio and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'd like to start off uh, by talking a, a little bit about, uh, you're going to be on a, um, a panel discussion this afternoon. I believe it's uh, looking at mobile identity, um, the, the, the sustainable goal 16.9, closing the digital divide using mobile identity. Perhaps if we could talk a little bit about that and give us your perspective on it. That's great. Th thank you so much. Um, so my work, Mobile for Development, looks at the ways mobile technology can have a social impact. And when the Sustainable Development Goals launched uh, two, two years ago, we had SDG 16.9, which talked about the identity gap and people who are living without identification. Um, and indeed, that's about a billion people. Uh, so we started looking at the ways mobile technology could perhaps close that gap. And now mobile is connecting about 5 billion people, uh, of which 3.8 billion are located in low and middle income countries. Um, so we're really looking at the ways mobile technology can create identity solutions. Um, and one such example we have comes from Pakistan, where we've been working with Telenor Pakistan, UNICEF, and ourselves, GSMA, uh, on mobile birth registration as children are born. And so in the provinces where we did this, in the Sindh province and Punjab, uh, we actually saw a 200% increase in birth registration for children who were born in that area, thanks to mobile being the channel uh, for uh, identity. And what other solutions could it provide then in, in, uh, in terms of uh, being people being more enfranchised? Then? Exactly. Once you have this identity, it, it opens up all these life-enhancing services. So we look at financial inclusion. Uh, we know that about 20% of people say they aren't able to access financial services because of the identity gap. And so identity brings you to the digital financial service. Uh, we also look at services like health, uh, where we know that mobile is having a very powerful impact on things like nutrition. We look at services like agriculture. And of course, we, t we play a special role in looking at the gender gap, uh, where we do know that there's digital exclusion for women. Uh, and part of our work is looking both at digital identity as well as digital inclusion for women. What about the rollout of 5G? How is that going to help? Well, I think 5G is, is something that we look at in a very uh, affluent context, so where we already have 2, 3, 4G, we are moving to 5G. I think what we see in the kind of emerging market context is we're still pushing out on mobile broadband itself. So our focus is on bringing coverage to the final, to the last mile, as it were, uh, and making sure we have enabling policy environments to close that coverage gap before we get to 5G. And in terms of platforms like e-health and e-education, mm -hmm. etc., uh, perhaps I mean, we, we could maybe look at uh, that as well. I mean, how can these help achieve sustainable development and faster inclusion? So what we've seen, for example, on our health services is that we have um, more than a million families that we've reached with health information. And it's not just reach. We saw at least 11% increase on the um, impact of what someone knows about nutrition as well as their behaviors. So that story is really powerful. It means that mobile technology is not just giving you information, but actually changing the way you um, take care of your family's health and well-being. And in terms of e-education, any... any uh uh, interesting case studies there? I think there's some great examples of, of people and, and w the exciting thing about mobile is sort of lifelong learning and so you have education solutions which are reaching young people in schools etc but then you also have uh, uh, solutions which are reaching people who maybe didn't get the best education when they were younger and bringing that additional ed education opportunity to them later. There's been a lot of talk about AI here about mm. the Internet of Things to some people, of course, that's we're still getting them connected. Yeah. So, I mean, how far is that ahead in the future? That, I mean, are we looking at, uh, at uh, something which uh, is still is is still very very far out of the reach of lots of people? No, I think Internet of Things is is great because we've got a real leapfrog story there. So, if you look at uh, energy. Uh, we see these mobile-enabled solar solutions where you have these small kind of solar kits in people's homes, and those are actually uh, leveraging the technology of IoT. And so it means that people without electricity are actually coming onto the um, grid, as it were, but through solar, through clean energy, and they're using mobile technology, mobile money, and IoT. So uh, I think there's been a real leapfrogging in IoT. 
you've taken the time to be here. I know GSMA are very uh, involved in, in, in this event. Why, why is this event important, do you think? Events like this are so important because um, private sector is not in this on its own. Private sector absolutely is going to work hand in hand with government. Um, and for us, digital, you know, really a digital society is going to be so integral to the countries over the next decade. So we really would like to see increased partnership hand in hand between private sector and government to create these enabling policies. We've talked about here very much about new regulatory frontiers. Mm. What do you hope will be some of the key takeaways from this symposium? I think um, uh, for us, we, we really want to, to continue to crack the way we think about digital inclusion for the underserved. Uh, we know there are many people, uh, again, especially women and girls, especially low income, especially rural communities who are not getting the benefits of mobile internet. Uh, that would be powerful if we can find innovative ways to work well together. And then on digital identity, we also believe there's some complexities there in order to ensure trust for the consumer. We have to work together, government and private sector. And on a more global scale, looking forward to the, the goals, the 2030 development goals, basically sustainable development goals. I mean, how achievable do you think that they're going to be, particularly I mean, even if just looking at, uh, at SDG 16, for example? We're, we're bullish. Uh, we, we are excited about the way technology is accelerating the achievement of the SDGs. Uh, on mobile money, we've already reached the target that was set for mobile money on international remittances. And we reduced the cost significantly of sending money uh, between two countries. So we're excited to already have that uh, done. And now we'd love to see m progress continue on many of the other goals. That's been Ray Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. And uh, check out more fascinating insights on our ITU YouTube channel and uh, podcasts on our ITU SoundCloud channel as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.